Greetings, uh, this is Sakari from Omni Geometry. Welcome to this uh, introduction video to new uh, features in Omni Geometry version 1.3.10. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at the new features, some of the new features in uh, this new version that was just released. So let's begin. Uh, the first major new ver uh, feature is the ability to scale the user interface. So we, here we have the view menu, we have the scale user interface that we can use to scale the UI, bigger or smaller. Or we can use on Mac the keyboard shortcuts also. So with this you can freely uh, set the uh, size of the user interface to your liking. And, and if you are a grandpa or somebody with <laughs> uh, a little trouble seeing the UI, this will make the uh, Omni Gemini a lot more easier to use. And this will also like enable usage on a 4K or high other high resolution displays so and, and generally make Omni Gemini a lo lot more usable uh, as you can now see things better. So I like to use this with a little bit of scaling like maybe something like that so I can uh, have, have uh, a nice view here. Then uh, another new feature is this canvas zooming support. So here we have a like a very simple scene. Just let's, let's create something very very simple here. So we can just have something here. So uh, we have this uh, canvas uh, zoom put button here. So if I click here, I can see the current zoom level. And we also have this whole new toolbar here, uh, which shows you the current canvas uh, resolution and the zoom level. So with this, I can, by clicking on the minus button here, I can change the uh, zoom level of the canvas. So this means uh, if I set this scaling uh, to 50%, then I close this and I change the canvas size. And, and we can, with this, we can fit a lot more pixels uh, on your display uh, without being limited by the window size like pre previously. So we also have this uh, button to click to fill the canvas size into the window. If I click this, uh, it will now fill the canvas to the window uh, exactly. So with this uh, you can very easily uh, now create high resolution uh, versions of your scene. So as you can see we now have uh, a scene, scene with over 5k in re resolution and when we export that uh, it will now also show the export size here uh, and related to that we also have a lot no, new uh, options to set the export sizes so you can now specify uh, the units uh, from pixels to millimeters to inches. So you can export images that are easier to fit uh, into print printing purposes. For example, if I set the units to millimeters, uh, I can now see that this, this would take like 1.8 meters in size to print. So, I, and then I have, we have a lot of uh, presets here also to match common print sizes used by printers and different standards. For example, the A4 paper size can be chosen here and it will show you, okay, with this dots per inch, you're gonna have this kind of export size. And I can also, also choose easily here the print dots per inch DPI, which will increase the resolution to this. So now, now you don't have to manually calculate this anymore. You can uh, just use this easy easy export tool to uh, match your print, print res resolutions. And also what this enables now is, uh, um, it enables high resolution tracing. So um, now we have, uh, let's change that to lighter. Now, now we can uh, trace this and, uh, that's quite ugly. Let's try something else. Uh, for example, this, just a simple example. Mm. So this is now 
uh, enabling high resolution tracing images finally. So if you export this, uh, it will now export a high res uh, traced image that can be used for printing also and you can you can even like go crazy and, 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 and do like very high res like over 10,000 pixels and trace these images and but it's gonna get a little bit slow with this kind of resolution so you might wanna first test out with a low, ro lower resolution and then when you find a nice pattern come back to a high resolution image and, and trace it uh, so yeah 10,000 10, pixels is already very big so but anyway here we can also reset the scaling <coughs> So now, now you see actually the detail is, is pretty nice here and you get that full resolution tracing when you export it. Uh, so that is very nice for um, any, any art, artists using Omni Geometry. Also, uh, let's, let's, uh, we have the, now we have the 10,000 10, pixels here. So we have this um, mouse mode for panning the canvas also of course so now you can uh, actually pan the canvas and see see the whole canvas like this if you need to uh, modify it to center the panning just uh, uh, drag it towards the center of the of the screen and it, it will lock there or you can use uh, view and reset canvas pan so let's now fit the window size to the screen so we, we have better performance. All right, so that was it for the um, high resolution tracing. Then what we have is uh, new parameters for hue rotation range and hue rotation mode. I'm gonna quickly demonstrate this uh, just by showing what happens when I enable rotating hue and, and then animating here. So now you can see it's rotating the hues like before, but if I set this hue rate rotation range, for example, to 180 degrees, it means it's gonna be rotating the colors 180 degrees from um, red to green or actually like a, like a blue. If I set it to 360, it's gonna rotate the hues uh, from red and back to red. So it's gonna go through all the colors. So with 180, it's gonna only take the half uh, way distance, or if I even half that to 90, now it's rotating only from red to uh, like this violet color. So with this, uh, what you can do is uh, really uh, control your hue rotation much better. And let's uh, showcase a little bit about this. So if I had to set the hue velocity a little bit smaller here, so you can see what it's doing. Let's do something like this, for example. All right, that's nice. So, like you can see, uh, <coughs> it's now rotating the color linearly from blue to red or violet. If I set it for example 30, it's gonna be even like just in a range of blue color. So this combined with the ability to uh, change the color, for example, for example, um, if I set it to green and then animate, now you can see it's animating on the green to blue range. And if I set to, um, for example, yellow, it's going to be animating on yellow to green. So <coughs> with this you can um, do nice, really nice like pulsating color effects. And let's, let's put that to something so you can see it easier. Um, if you change the line color it will uh, like change the rotation range also. But if you interactively, if you rotate the color hues while animating hues, it's gonna stop the uh, rotation like you see. If I enable that and use the keyboard short that's bra bracket keys to rotate the hues, then it will stop the hue rotation animation because, uh, <coughs> uh, 
because of technical reasons how that works. So if you rotate colors while animating manually, you have to enable the rotate hues again to continue the animation. But let, let's look at the hue ro rotation mode parameter. So here we have the hue rotation mode par parameter which um, controls how it is animated. So now if I set this to a little bit faster so you can see now it's just going from um, one one color to the end of the other color and then back to the start of the one color from from green to uh, from green to yellow from green to yellow from green to yellow if I set it to sign it's gonna go uh, from uh, blue to violet, from blue to violet, using a sinusoidal curve uh, while it's doing that. This is doing it linearly, which means it just there is no easing into the animation. Uh, if I set it to linear two-way, uh, which is the default, it will go back and forth linearly. If I set it to sinusoidal two-way, it will go back and forth, with, but with this kind of uh, bouncing curve or a curve curve uh, controlling the back and forth movement. With this uh, you can see very easily what it's doing if I for example set that to a high, higher value, the hue velocity. <coughs> and this this for example combined with that tracing effect can can create some nice nice effects that I'm gonna show a little bit here. For example, you will create this kind of controlled uh, traces, like you get the gradients coming out of these these patterns here. You can see it very simply here, like this, and and with a different different way, it will do something different, like a, a different pattern. So play around with this, and this this already. Uh, Changes a lot of things for the animation. It's gonna you can add a lot of more depth depth to your scenes with this. I'm gonna go much more into detail this in another tutorial video where we're gonna create some nice pulsating color effect. So that was it for the hue rotation. Then uh, we have um, the canvas size toolbar. So. Uh, We have added this canvas size toolbar here, so if you click on this, you can now easily set the canvas size. And uh, we have added this ratio preset here, so for example, if you want to make the image square easily, uh, you can just select this one to one ratio and set, and now we have a square canvas. So it's it's with this, it's easy to fit the uh, current size to some aspect ratio you are perhaps working with or exporting to. So for example to 16 to 9 I just choose this and it calculates the width uh, so that it fits the height like this. And uh, or, or perhaps for mobile screens they use this, this ratio so this could be fitted on a, on a mobile background easily. For example, and then a um, couple of new features also, uh, which I'm gonna load another scene to demonstrate here. This one, uh, we have added also these two new parameters called tracing frame rate and animation speed multiplier. So let me show you what we got going here. Let's increase. We have this uh, very simple formation with some points being drawn with variable arc lengths there. Uh, you can see like this, it's it's actually just points but with a uh, shorter arc length there. So it creates this, this kind of nice, nice, nice effect when tracing. So 
we have the animator speed multiplier which the controls the global animation speed so if I set this to 0.5 it's gonna half the speed and so on so with this you can very easily try out different uh, animation speeds so you don't have to individually change the scale or rotation velocities so let's set that back to 1 and let's look at the tracing frame rate parameter this is by default 60 or it is uh, actually detected um, to match your screen refresh rate so I'm running on a 60 Hz display so the tracing frame rate is gonna be 60 on and what that means is now if I trace the image let's change the line weight a little bit so we get a smoother effect uh, you can see it's now tracing uh, one um, iteration of the tracing on each frame so it runs on at 60 Hertz uh, you don't have to care about that basically it just means that, means that the tracing stepping between the uh, these traces uh, is being controlled by this uh, parameter so if I set this to 120 for example then you can see now the gap is much smaller between these traces and with this you can create very beautiful tracing patterns uh, and control the tracing much better than before and for example let's try a little bit more 240 and we have presets here also for most common uh, like display refresh rates and uh, and why is it just set to these hertzes uh, I mean frequencies is uh, um, because if it runs natively on a 240 hertz display then it, this is gonna be by default 240 so here you can see um, it's 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 already creating a much more detailed trace effect here we can even even zoom in and see a little bit more closer so with this you can really sometimes it creates this Moira effect so with that you 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 want to test out different values for let's just go back test out different values for that to find out what is good for you so if I trace this for a while you can see it creates this a very very um, uh, smooth effect and actually if I wanna go back to the saved version we now have this also this revert to saved feature here so I choose that and it will revert to the version I had saved before this only works in the offline version so here we have now the tracing frame rate set to 12 which means it's gonna trace with a very big gap between these and I can increase that while doing it so you can see what it does like like this like that yeah so those are the major new features in this this version and, and we're gonna go in depth with the hue rotation range parameter still and we have also moved some of the uh, parameters uh, to the anim and FX tab here so it's uh, easier to see the animation parameters on one page and make it less cluttered there's a lot of more new improvements also in this, this version you can check out the change log in our blog for full details on, 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 uh, on the changes so this was uh, Sakari from Omni Germany and uh, hope you enjoyed this version and uh, we're very happy about what you can already do this and we're excited to see what you come up with, especially with the high resolution tracing images and combined with the hue range and trace frame rate uh, I'm gonna feel a lot, of, a lot of people are gonna find some very beautiful designs through that so without further ado uh, happy new year to you and, and may new beginnings bring you everything that you need in your life all the blessings all the resources all the people everything you need I have a good feeling about this year and I'm happy to provide people with the tool to connect to these patterns to make beautiful things to share that beauty beauty in the world that is, that is truly what we need anyway this was Sakari signing off bye bye